I'm Jamie and we're from Virtual, Virtual Ice, Ice Skating, Skating Coach. Coach. We're here to talk about different skating disciplines and we're going to interview my old teammate who I used to skate with on Oakland University synchronized skating team and talk about synchronized skating. Kelsey is a coach for Onyx Infinity synchronized skating teams and she's going to give us a little bit more information. This is Kelsey and why don't you tell us a little bit about where you work at and what you do. I am one of the synchronized skating coaches for um, Onyx Infinity so we have teams out of Onyx in Rochester. We have teams out of St. Clair Shores, out of Mount Clemens, and out of Lakeland Ice Arena. So we're kind of all over the place and growing as an organization. This past season I coached Open Juve and this upcoming season I'm sure I'll be coaching many teams after we have tryouts. Can you tell us a little bit about synchronized skating? Because our goal is to provide parents information and new skaters information on the disciplines of other types of skating. I've been in synchro for over 20 years now. It is the discipline that I love the most personally. It really teaches you how to work together as a team. So teams can range anywhere from eight to 16 skaters. We have levels from tiny little three-year-olds that are barely moving on the ice to there are levels that are um, international and world level teams. They are taught how to skate together. So it's kind of like ice dancing, but 16 people instead of two. And they learn how to stay connected and do um, different formations on the ice. It's a really great team atmosphere so the skaters really get to know each other, they grow up together. Um, the girls that I grew up skating with are still to this day some of my best friends. I've known them for forever and you just grow with them so I think it's a great way to learn how to be a part of a team, how to um, work together, to do something different in synchro. You know freestyle isn't everybody's uh, cup of tea so a really fun way to get another part of skating in your life. So I was just going to ask about the different levels of synchro and you touched base on most of them. So we have mostly new skaters. What is the like lowest level that you teach for the synchro skills or beginner synchro teams? Yeah so we have synchro snowplow and that is going to be like the tiny three to five year olds maybe up to six year olds depending on their skating level that are like marching and that might be about it. And it's really fun because they'll learn how to do a lot of the same formation things. Obviously, they're not going to be doing complex turns and things like that, but they'll start getting the basics of synchro down and they learn how to skate together and how to skate next to somebody. And it's a lot of fun with them. So you can start synchro at any age. So the sooner you get into skating, the synchro, the better it's going to help you with your other levels. It's going to help you level up in freestyle and moves and dance because it helps you with learning edges and learning the basic skills and also about where your upper body is in proportion to your legs because a lot of times with synchro if you're pulling your partner down you're going to pull the whole line down so you have to make sure that you're aware of where your body is as well. What are your teams doing to kind of stay safe with COVID regulations? Or is there anything in particular? Yeah so we've been following state guidelines the entire time which has definitely made it an interesting season. We spent a lot of the season unable to connect this year, uh, so we did a lot of individual skill building, which was really great for skater development from beginner all the way up. So at the lower levels, we worked on stroking and chasses and pointing their toe. Jamie talked about, you know, really carrying your upper body up here, working on your upper body strength, even off the ice. We were doing some stuff when we were allowed to be outside when it was not Michigan winters. And we were masked at every single practice. So even the little kids were wearing masks during um, their on ice and off ice time. And then when we were allowed to by state guidelines, we were connecting. The clubs uh, in all over the world actually introduced virtual competitions this year, which was really cool. So teams could connect and do certain elements or even do disconnected elements if they weren't able to connect in their area. We were able to do some virtual competitions as well, which was really fun. That's, that is cool. That's cool that everybody is able to be flexible and like yeah. adapt to all the changing rules and because competition Forever is, changing. is the fun part of synchro. We have clinics um, starting on April 12th at St. Clair Shores and then we have subsequent clinics going on at every rink that week. So Tuesday is at Lakeland, Saturday is at Rochester and then Sunday is at Mount Clemens and then the same thing fo the following week. So we have uh, two weeks of clinics before we start auditions. Those will start in the beginning of May. You can find more information on our website, on Facebook, and on Instagram if you follow Onyx Infinity Synchro. And for the clinics too, if that's a good way to test it out and see if you're interested in it, you might 
uh, go there and find that you have friends that you know actually already skating and trying out as well. So with clinics too, you'll learn a little bit of the skills and then you can make a better decision on if you really want to dive right into a team too and go to tryouts too. Yes, and you know, one thing to keep in mind with Synchro is it's, you know, it's not always about jumps and spins and things like that. It's really about building a well-rounded skater. So you'll learn a lot about moves in the field and you'll learn about ice dance and you'll start taking ice dance lessons when you get to a little bit higher level and you'll be working on your moves test with your private coach. So, you know, you don't have to be a high level skater. You don't have to be somebody who's doing axles and doubles to skate synchro. You can just be somebody who's brand new in synchro skills and, and your basic skills are just starting private lessons and come try synchro. It's really fun and it's a fun way to stay engaged in the sport and do something else that keeps you on the ice because it's the place we all love to be. And I also think, um, and maybe you can speak a little bit, a lot of my students are attracted to Synchro because of the camaraderie in the, in the team. It's not just going to the rink by myself and practicing by myself. You're with a whole group of girls. So we had um, this year, this past season was the first year that our teams merged. So we had um, Infinity Synchro that merged with Onyx Synchro at the kids levels. And so um, we took this group of teenage girls from one rink and teenage girls from another rink and then brought in more teenage girls from the Lakeland rink and merged them all together and you know really um, when you think about it especially during COVID this was the only connection these girls had to other people because they were in virtual school um, they a lot of them were not seeing their friends they weren't out you know going to family parties or anything because of the COVID rules in place so um, you know the girls really supported each other they have text chains they all talk to each other some of them go to school together a lot of them skate at rinks together, you know, all over Metro Detroit, so they're able to see each other during the week, and then they come to synchro practice. Pre-COVID, they did a ton of team sleepovers and team outings. We try to get them involved in volunteer opportunities, so they're giving back to the community as well. Um, so we're trying to grow a well-rounded human as well as a well-rounded skater, and it really helps build them as, as a person into who they want to be. And they're doing it alongside their friends, which just makes everything way more fun. Yeah, and a lot, a couple of my skating students joined the Onyx teams, and like you were saying, for during COVID, it was only socialization that they had. So parents were like, "Oh, what can we do? There's no, there's not skating with this." And I'm like, "Well, you could try synchro, and then you could skate with your friends, and you can meet people." And like, like Kelsey and I skated on a, our collegiate team for a long time together, and like I was just like, "Hey, I'm doing this video. What, you you want to be in my interview?" And so we have yeah. that connection too, and. Yeah, it's lifelong friendships. I mean, when I got married seven years ago, more than half my wedding was my uh, skating friends from growing up. They were my coaches from growing up. And, you know, my husband is a lifelong supporter of Synchro now and thinks it's the coolest <laughs> sport to watch. He's a hockey player, so, you know, I think that says a lot. But it just builds a community around you that you always have support through. And then you have lifelong friendships through that you'll never, ever take for granted. What gear do you recommend for Synchro? Like for blades or boots, is there any specific one you recommend for beginners or adult skaters? Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with the skater themselves because every foot is different. So for me, I have a flat, wider foot, so I usually go Jackson's um, and I typically skate in like a pattern 99. Let's talk about synchro blades versus say freestyle blades. Yeah, so really um, it doesn't matter necessarily for synchro what blade you decide to do. You know, I've skated in a, you know, typical freestyle blade my entire synchro career, as do most of my skaters. I think if you are skating on a senior team, maybe for Hayden, that might be different. You might have a little bit more um, synchro specific blade, but, um, you know, for right now, while you're working on becoming that well-rounded skater, any blade that is recommended by your skating retailers is perfectly fine. For synchro, what practice gear would you recommend wearing? Yeah, so we typically wear uh, black leggings and a black zip up. There are, is some gear that if you decide to join the team, you'll order that is a uh, part of the matching outfits that they'll skate in. So our younger teams to wear like a long sleeve Under Armour shirt and then their black zip up over it. And, you know, typically just things to keep them warm, especially at those younger levels. Um, they tend to get colder a little bit quicker. So I tell them to layer up and be warm out there. The higher levels will wear things like practice dresses, more so for official practices and things like that at competitions. Um, but otherwise, we typically practice in leggings, long sleeve shirts, tank tops, depending on the levels. As far as the fees go, the monthly fees, what exactly do those include in the synchro fees? Yeah, so in a not COVID season, um, monthly fees would typically include your ice fees, your coaching fees, and your competition fees. 
So then anything that would be outside of that would be like travel expenses, clothing, things like that. Especially at the younger levels, we try to keep that to a minimum, especially while we're there getting used to Synchro and making sure that it's uh, an affordable season, uh, while they're getting used to it and making sure that it's something they want to stick to. This year we did just ice and coaching fees in our monthly dues. When we did virtual competitions, it was a separate fee collected per skater, but parents were warned of that ahead of time, that if we decided to do that, that's what the cost would be per skater. And is it a contract you enter for the season? It is, yep. So. After clinics and tryouts, it, you'll get a, a letter from or an email from our directors uh, giving you your team placement. Um, if you decide to accept, you'll sign a contract um, that will go over all of the rules for the season, um, what you can expect from us, what we would expect from you, and then you can go over any questions that you have with the directors, the coaches, and then from there you would be uh, basically locked in for the season. There used to be something called an alternate to a team. Do you still have that, those, those types of positions? Yeah, so there are still alternate positions out there. Um, you know, our teams are still growing, so we're basically skating most teams at uh, the number of skaters. So this year, for instance, I had 16 skaters on my open juke team, which is how many you can skate. So we would skate all 16 skaters. There is still a possibility at levels for alternates, um, and that would essentially be skaters who are still working um, to get to the level of the rest of the teams. We want to make sure that everybody is at about the same midline level, and they would still skate into spots you know, they would skate for people who might be out sick or might be hurt, and they would still train with the team while they're working on their skills. And then there's potentials for alternates to skate competitions, you know, depending on the situation, and continuing to work on those skills. The also has adult teams, so if you're a former skater who used to skate freestyle, uh, moves in the field, ice dance, pairs, any of those other um, disciplines of skating, or if you skated synchro when you were younger and you're interested in, back at, get, in getting back on the ice, um, we do have separate adult clinics, and you can find that information on our social media pages as well. The adult teams start at 18 years old and go all the way up to skaters in their 60s and 70s. It is a great way to get some time for yourself, to get on the ice, to get, have some time with your friends, maybe to get away from your family for a little bit and have some you time. It's a lot of fun. Uh, last season, pre-COVID season, both our masters and adult team made nationals and skated at nationals, which was super fun. You know, the travel is fairly minimal for those teams, um, but it is a great way to just get some exercise and have a lot of fun um, with your friends. Or in a dune buggy driving by. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, I think you answered all our questions, and be sure to check out their social media page. And Onyx Infinity, right? Yes, Onyx Infinity Synchro. Uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram. All of our clinics and tryout information is on there. Um, you can see videos of our teams. You can see pictures of our skaters. And just come and check us out. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to learn about synchronized skating. Be sure to check out www.onyxinfinity.com or your local area teams for trial information regarding the upcoming season. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to our channel.